Malinali was washing clothes in the river on the outskirts of the town of Cholula. She was upset. There was too much noise, far too much. Not just the noise made by her hands when she scrubbed and rinsed the clothes in the water, but the noise inside her head. Everything around her spoke of this agitation. The river where she washed the clothes charged the place with music to the force of the water crashing on the stones. Added to this sound was that of the birds, who were as agitated as ever. The frogs, the crickets, the dogs, and the Spaniards themselves, the new inhabitants of this land, who contributed with the clamorous sounds of their armor, their cannons, and their harquebuses. Malinali needed silence, calm. In the Popol Vah, the sacred book of their elders, it stated that when everything was at silence, in complete calm, in the darkness of night, in the darkness of the light, then would creation arise. Malinali needed that silence to create new and resonant words, the right words, the ones that were necessary. Recently, she had stopped serving Porto Carrero, her lord, because Cortés had named her the tongue, the one who translated what he said into the Nahuatl language and what Montezuma's messenger said from Nahuatl to Spanish. Although Malinali had learned Spanish at an extraordinary speed, in no way could it be said that she was completely fluent. Often she had to turn to Aguilar to help her to translate it correctly, so that what she said made sense in the minds of both the Spaniards and the Mexicas. Being the tongue was an enormous responsibility. She didn't want to make a mistake or misinterpret and she couldn't see how to prevent it, since it was so difficult translating complex ideas from one language to the other. She felt as if each time she uttered a word, she journeyed back hundreds of generations. When she said the name of Ometeot, the creator of the dualities Omesiwat and Ometekutli, the masculine and feminine principles she put herself at the beginning of creation. That was the power of the spoken word. But then, how can you contain in a single word the god Ometeot, he who is without shape, the Lord who is not born and does not die, whom water cannot wet, fire cannot burn, wind cannot move, and earth cannot bury. Impossible. The same seemed to happen to Cortés, who couldn't make her understand certain concepts of his religion. Once she asked him what the name of God's wife was. God doesn't have a wife, Cortés answered. It cannot be. Why not? Because without a womb, without darkness, light cannot emerge. Life cannot emerge. It is from her greatest depths that Mother Earth creates precious stones, and in the darkness of the womb that gods and humans take their forms. Without a womb, there is no God. Cortés stared intently at Malinali and saw the light in the abyss of her eyes. It was a moment of intense connection between them, but Cortés directed his eyes somewhere else, abruptly disconnected himself from her because he was frightened by that sensation of complicity, of belonging, and he immediately tried to cut off the conversation between them, for, aside from everything else, it seemed too strange speaking about religious matters with her a native in his service. What do you know about God? Your gods demand all the blood in the world in order to exist while our God offers his own to us with each communion. We drink his blood. Malinali did not understand all of the words that Cortés had just uttered. 
What she wanted to hear, what her brain wanted to interpret, was that the God of the Spaniards was a fluid God, for he was in the blood, in the secret of the flesh, the secret of love, that he was contained in the eternity of the universe, and she wanted to believe in such a deity. So then, your God is liquid? Malinali asked enthusiastically. Liquid? Yes. Didn't you say that he was in the blood that he offered? Yes, woman. But now answer me. Do your gods offer you blood? No. Aha. Uh -huh. Then you shouldn't believe in them. Malinali's eyes filled with tears as she replied, I don't believe that they have to offer blood. I believe in your liquid God. I like that he's a God who is constantly flowing and that he manifests himself even in my tears. I like that he is stern, strict, and just, that his anger could create or make the universe vanish in one day. But you can't have that without water or a womb. For there to be songs and flowers, there needs to be water. With it, words rise and matter takes on form. There is life that is born without a womb, but it does not remain long on the earth. What is engendered in darkness, however, in the profundity of caves, like precious gems and gold, lasts much longer. They say that there is a place beyond the sea, where there are higher mountains, and there Mother Earth has plentiful water to fertilize the earth. And here, in my land, we have deep caves, and within them great treasures are produced. Really? What treasures? Where are these caves? Malinali did not want to answer him and said that she did not know. His interruption bothered her. It proved that Cortés was not interested in talking about his religion or his gods or his beliefs or even about her. It was clear that he was only interested in material treasures. She excused herself and went to weep by the river. This and many other things made it difficult for them to understand each other. Malinali believed that words colored memory, planting images each time that a thing was named. And as flowers bloomed in the countryside after a rainfall, so that which was planted in the mind bore fruit each time that a word, moistened by saliva, named it. For example, the concept of a true and eternal God, which the Spaniards had proclaimed in her mind had borne fruit because it had already been planted there by her ancestors. From them she had also learned that things came to exist when you named them, when you moistened them, when you painted them. God breathed through his word gave life through it. And because of this, because of the labor and grace of the God of all things, it was possible to paint in the mind of the Spaniards and Mexicas new concepts, new ideas. Being the tongue was a great spiritual duty, for it meant putting all her being at the service of the gods so that her tongue was part of the resounding system of the divinity so that her voice would spread through the cosmos the very meaning of existence. But Malinali did not feel up to the task. Very often, when translating, she let herself be guided by her feelings, and then the voice that came out of her mouth was no other than the voice of fear. Fear of being unfaithful to the gods, of failure, fear of not being able to bear responsibility and truthfully, also fear of power, of taking power. Never before has she felt what it was like to be in charge. She soon found that whoever controls information, whoever controls meaning, acquires power. And she discovered that when she translated, she controlled the situation. 
and not only that, but that words could be weapons, the finest of weapons. Words were like lightning, swiftly crossing valleys, mountains, seas, bringing needed information as readily to monarchs as to vassals, creating hope or fear, establishing alliances, abolishing enemies, changing the course of events. Words were warriors, be they sacred warriors like the Lord Aguila or simple mercenaries. As to their divine character, words transform the empty space in the mouth into the center of creation, repeating there the same act with which the universe had been made by uniting the feminine and masculine principles into one.